Welcome to Automate BPA Server 8, an enterprise solution that combines cross-platform automation with the power of a centralized management console. Automate BPA Server 8 consists of three development components. On the screen is a Server Management Console, or SMC, which provides centralized management and administration of automated processes across distributed networks. Next is the Workflow Designer, which is a highly graphical interface that allows you to design and develop IT and business processes. Lastly, we have the Task Builder, which is the development interface used to visually assemble a task or process that you want to carry out when it is executed. In this video demo, we will focus primarily on the Workflow Designer and Task Builder. For now, let's go back to the Server Management Console. To create a new workflow, click the New button. Let's name the workflow Cloud Automation. To open the workflow, select the Edit button. This opens up the Workflow Designer. The Workflow Designer has a highly graphical interface that allows you to design and develop IT and business processes. On the left-hand side of the Workflow Designer, you have a list of available objects, including task, flow controls, events, and conditions. Drag the performance condition onto the workspace. We'll name the first condition if CPU utilization reaches 80%. Drag another performance condition onto the workspace. We'll name this if memory utilization reaches 80%. Notice that both performance conditions use the same agent, a Lazaryev, which is deployed in the cloud with Amazon Web Services. Agents, which are services that run in the background, can reside on any machine on-premise, in the cloud, or a hybrid of the two across the network. Double-click on the first condition to set the properties. Since the agent is deployed in the cloud, use local computer. For category, select processor. To monitor CPU utilization, set counter to percent processor time and the instance to total. Set the trigger to execute when CPU utilization is above 80% for more than 5 seconds. Select Update. Next, we'll use the Success Flow Control. You have two options. Drag the Success Flow Control onto the workspace and attach it to the condition or select the condition to display the flow control and drag it out. Note that by right-clicking on a flow control, you can immediately change the type of control from success to failure or result. The next step in the workflow is to create a task. Again, we have two options. First, I can drag a new unbuilt task onto the workspace. If I double-click on this task, it will open the task builder. However, I already have a task that fits into my workflow logic. If I click on the repository, expand and locate the task, I can simply drag it onto the workspace. Remember, the repository stores all automation assets previously created. I don't have to reinvent the wheel. All I have to do is open the task builder and modify it. For now, let's connect the arrows. To summarize so far, if any of these performance conditions reach 80% usage capacity, it will trigger this task to run. Although I use the performance condition as a trigger to start a task, I can alternately use a schedule trigger or key trigger. Also, I can use any number of these conditions to kick off a task including the window condition, file monitor, SNMP trap, event log, among others. While the events and conditions can be used to trigger a workflow, they can also be used throughout the workflow as a precondition to the next step. 
In fact, you can also have a workflow within a workflow by simply dragging an unbuilt workflow onto the workspace or dragging an existing one from the repository. After the task is executed, we want to evaluate the results. The evaluation flow controls allow you to change the execution order of the workflow based on the evaluation results. Double click on the evaluation icon, select value of this variable and choose email 1 from the drop down. We are expecting one of two results. Let's use the flow controls. We are expecting one of two results. Let's use the result flow controls. If an AWS instance is successfully provisioned, we want to send out an email or tweet stating that an instance has started. If an AWS instance failed to start, we want to send out an email or tweet stating that an instance failed to start. Since I've already created these two tasks, I will use the repository to drag and drop these tasks onto the workspace. The last step is to define how each result is handled. In our example, we are sending an email to admin in both circumstances. If you double click on the result arrow, it allows you to define various parameters. Now that we've created a workflow, let's open the task builder. Double click on the task. The task builder is the development interface used to visually assemble a task or process that you want to carry out when it is executed. It is divided into three panes. In the left pane, you have the actions pane. The middle section is your workspace. This is where you drag and drop your actions and build your task in a series of steps. At the bottom, you have the debug pane. The action pane contains the actions and activities you will need to create a series of steps to build your IT or business process. Since we use the task from the repository, notice that the steps already exist and are in plain English. So let's briefly review some of the new functionality. Within our FTP multi-activity framework, we've added the capability to synchronize folders. We now support FXP for copying files from one FTP server to another with an FXP compliant server. With the web browser action, we've added support for additional browsers, including Firefox, Chrome, and Safari. We've also added support for AS2, which is a protocol for transporting data securely and reliably over the internet. We now have support for Microsoft SharePoint. This allows you to automate the creation, deletion, and modification of SharePoint activities. We also support Microsoft Exchange. You can automate various Exchange activities such as managing contacts, appointments, tasks, and emails. If we scroll down, you'll notice our integration with Amazon Web Services including Amazon Simple Storage Service, Amazon Simple Q Service, Amazon Simple DB, the popular Elastic Compute Cloud, and Amazon Relational Database Service. Just below AWS, we have support for VMware, which allows you to perform various operations on VMware virtual machines, such as power on and off, take snapshots, clone of VM, and much more. Now let's look at the steps involved in starting an EC2 instance. In the first step, we create a variable, which is a data store. Then we create an EC2 session using the EC2 action from Amazon Web Services. We obtain a list of all running EC2 instances. We then loop through the EC2 instances and identify the instance that is stopped and finally we start the instance to load balance. Thank you and that concludes our introduction to Automate BPA Server 8.